Are you ready to learn the basics of coding in no time flat? If you have never programmed before, but you still want to learn how to control electronics with code, then hold on because we are going to jump through a bunch of stuff. This is what you're about to learn. How every Arduino program is laid out. How to use variables to store information. How to use control structures to actually build logic. And then sprinkled in there, we're going to talk about the most important Arduino specific functions that you need to know to get started. The best part is we're going to use actual Arduino programs to learn this stuff. So you're actually going to see it in action. Let's do this. Hey, before we start, if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it if you would take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you but a click, but it really helps us bring you great material like this Arduino workshop. All right, here we are in the Arduino IDE, and this is the stuff we're going to go over. How every Arduino program is laid out, how to use variables, how to use control structures, and we're going to be talking about all the most important Arduino-specific functions as we go through this. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up a new sketch. We're going to talk about how an Arduino program is laid out. So here's a new sketch, and what do you notice? There's some words here, some stuff. Well, this stuff, these are functions. And the reason we know their functions is they've got these open and closing. So here's an open and here's a closing parenthesis after a word. So that kind of setup, when you see an open closing parenthesis, maybe some stuff would be in here. That's going to give it away like, hey, this is a function. So the name of this function is called setup. It has an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. Same thing with this function. This function is called loop. And it also has an opening and closing curly brace. Now, you can forget this word void. Don't worry about that. But these two functions, setup and loop, need to be in every single Arduino program you write. If we read the information that's in here, it says, put your setup code here to run once. And in loop, it says, put your main code here to run repeatedly. Well, what does it mean to run code? What are they talking about? Well, that just means that if we write any code in here, it's going to execute the code and it's going to execute the code from the top to the bottom. So if we have code one, code two, it's going to execute code one first, and then the next line of code, code two, and it's going to go on till it gets to the end. And once it gets to the end, setup is over, and then it moves on to the loop. So setup runs once, and the code you'll put in here is stuff that only needs to run once. It's like code that's going to set up the other part of your program. Now the loop it's going to run over and over again. So in loop, it also starts at the top and it's going to work its way down. First, it's going to execute this code on line nine and then this code on line 10. Of course, this isn't code. This is just gibberish, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. Then it gets to the bottom curly brace. And when it gets here, it starts back up at the top and it runs this code step by step. And it's going to do that forever. That is, it just repeats the same thing over and over and over until either you remove power from the Arduino board or, I don't know, the universe ends in heat death. Now, you might be thinking, wait a second. How can a program that does the same thing over and over again actually do anything really useful? Doesn't that kind of limit it to doing simple stuff? Now, at first blush, you are totally right. But what we can do as programmers, and where it really gets fun, is we can use variables and control structures to change how the program reacts. And so you're able to get extremely creative, diverse logic that can control things from graphical user interfaces to countdowns to just about anything you can dream up. So these functions, void setup and void loop, are extremely important. They are going to be in every single one of your Arduino programs. In fact, if you leave one of these functions out, you're going to get an error. So now we don't have the loop function. Let me verify, and we should see an error down here. And we get an undefined reference to loop, which is just saying, hey, man, stick that loop in there. OK, so this is how every Arduino program is laid out with setup and loop. All right, so now let's talk about variables. These are super awesome tools that you're going to be using in just about every program you write. A variable is like a bucket that allows you to store information in it. Like, say we wanted to measure the temperature with a temperature sensor. When you store the value from the temperature sensor, you would put it into a variable. 
Making a variable is simple and storing information in a variable is really simple. You need four things. You need a type, a name, an assignment operator, which is just an equal sign, and then the value that you're actually going to store into the variable. So let's go through each of these items. Again, that's type, a name, an assignment operator, equal sign, and then an actual value. The type, it's also called a data type, is the kind of information that you're actually going to store in the variable. And there's a bunch of different data types, and I have them listed right down here. If you want to pause the video, you can take a look at them. So you've got Boolean types. Those are like true false values. So with a Boolean, there's only two options. It's either going to be true or false, zero or one, but technically zero is false and any number other than zero would be evaluated to true. And then you can also have high and low. So high is true and low is false. So those are examples of Boolean variables. Then you have a byte. That's just a small number from zero to 255. So a lot of times when we're referring to those pin numbers on the Arduino, I'll save those as a byte because it's just a small number and it doesn't take up a lot of memory. So the more the variable can store, the more memory it takes. And a byte is a pretty darn small variable and that's why I use it for something like a pin number. Larger numbers are can be integers and that type is just INT, just like up here, Boolean would be B-O-O-L, so that is the type you would write out before the name. So integers can store negative values to negative 32,000 and some change up to 32,000 and some change. And then for bigger numbers, you can use a long, and you just type the word long, and it's a longer number. It's like all the way up to 2 billion and some change and all the way down to negative 2 billion and some change. That's a huge number. And then a float is going to be a number that has a decimal point. And then if you want to store a character, something that's going to actually be displayed on text, like say on an LCD screen or a computer monitor, you'd store it as a character and you store single characters as C-H-A-R, car stands for character and you use single quotes. And then if you want to hold a bunch of characters, like let's say you're storing somebody's name or, or maybe the name of your Wi-Fi network, you would use a character array and that's going to be name and then these open and closing brackets, these square brackets, and then you use double quotes for storing that whole line of text right there. And this is what we'd call a string. Now, it's different than capital S string that you'll see in the Arduino language, but we're not going to be talking about that now. We're just going to say, uh, we're just going to be using character arrays to store strings. So that's what I mean when I say type. What about the name? Well, the name of the variable is just how you're going to refer to it in your code. Variable names can contain letters, numbers, and underscores, but they can't start with a number. And you can't use emojis in your names. Bummer. But you can use descriptive names for your variables. So using something like current temperature would be more clear than just writing the letter CT or something like that. Now to actually store a value into the variable, you need to use an equal sign, which is called the assignment operator. So here it is right here, the assignment operator. Throw out all the algebra you know, because this has nothing to do with that. When you see this, it says take the value over here and store it into this variable's bucket. That's what it's saying. So it's going to evaluate this. And this doesn't have to just be a value. This could be an expression over here. So it's going to evaluate this expression and save it right here. So let's say I had two variables here. One is called taser blast and it's set equal to eight. And then the other one is called pain threshold. And notice I set it equal to this expression right? So this is taser blast. So this is referring to this variable. So this is the number eight. And we're saying, well, what's eight divided by two? Well, that would be four, right? So now pain threshold would be holding the value four. Now to set up a variable the first time, all you really need to use is a declaration. So that is the type in the name. So we could do something like taser blast. That would be a declaration. And once you've declared it, then you can use it in your code just by using the name. So then we could do something like this. We could say taser blast equals eight. We don't have to include the type anymore because we've already declared the type. So now the program knows, oh, hey, taser blast is an integer. It's a variable that stores an integer. And here we are assigning the value eight to it. But you can also do that all in one line. And that's a declaration and initialization all in one. So taser blast equal eight. So here we are defining it 
and we are initializing it to eight. Now, finally, one thing you might be wondering here is, what, what about this semicolon here? You see a bunch of semicolons, right? Well, anytime you've finished with a statement in Arduino, that is, you're like finished with your line of code, then you end it with a semicolon. So a lot of programming languages, they use spaces between lines to delineate one statement of code from the next. But Arduino, which is based on C and C++, is not one of those languages. It uses semicolons. So for example, we could break this line up into this right here. So notice how these are on two different lines, but since the semicolons here, when we verify the program, the compiler, which is part of the IDE, which is gonna be checking for our code, looking at our code for errors, it's gonna start on line five, but it's not gonna see an end of this statement until it gets to that semicolon. So this is fine, in fact, this is fine, but normally you'd see it like this. Okay, so variables, they're like special purpose buckets and they can hold and store values. Let's look at an example program that uses some variables. So I'm gonna to go to File, Examples, Basics, Fade. And let me clean this up real quick just so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so check this out. We've got three variables up at the top, above setup. And when a variable is above setup, it means it can be used by any function inside the program. So it's called global when it's up here. So like I said, here's three variables. And we see that they are declaring and initializing each one of these variables. So all of them are of what type? Integer, right? And then each one has a name. So one's called LED, one's called brightness, and one is called fade amount. They assign the value nine to LED. And here it says the PWM pin the LED is attached to. So they have a circuit that might look something like this. They've got an LED. One side of the LED is connected through a resistor to pin nine, which is capable of doing pulse width modulation. The other side of the resistor with the short leg is connected to ground. Then they have a variable called brightness set to zero and a variable called fade amount set to five. So let's just take a look at the rest of this program. We're gonna find some really interesting functions in here. So here's setup, you recall setup runs once, and there is a really important function inside setup here called pin mode. So if you recall, the pins on the microcontroller are how they interact with the outside world. And we can access those pins through the headers on the Arduino board, right? If we want them to be inputs, we need to use this pin mode function to set them as inputs. If we want those pins to be outputs, like turning on an LED, we need to set those pins to be outputs. And the way we do that is in setup because it only needs to happen once. And we use this function called pin mode. Now you should notice that pin mode is a function, right? Because it's got a name and then it's got these open, opening and closing parentheses. You also notice that it changes to a specific color and this means that it's an Arduino specific function. It's like a special function that Arduino is using. And pin mode takes two values. It's said that you pass in values to this function. The first value is LED. So what was LED? Well, that's a variable name and we had set it equal to nine. So we're passing the value nine to pin mode and then we have a comma and then we're passing this keyword output. And what this is telling the Arduino is, hey, pin nine on that microcontroller needs to be set as an output. That way it can source voltage. So pin mode, super important Arduino function. So what's the first thing that happens in the loop? Well, we come to another really important Arduino specific function called analog write. We know it's Arduino specific because it turns orange like this or it highlights in a specific way. Now, depending on the IDE you're using, maybe it doesn't highlight, but anyway, you know it's a function because it's got these open and closing parentheses. And you'll notice we pass in some variables, some values here. Now what analog write does is for the pins that are capable of doing PWM, pulse width modulation, it sets the duty cycle. So if you recall with PWM, we're adjusting the on and off time of that pin very rapidly, and we can adjust the average voltage of the pin between zero and five volts. But it's on a scale and it goes from zero to 255. So this first value LED is referring to the pin number that we want to apply the PWM at. So what was LED? Well, oh, that's right, we set it to nine. So this is the value nine. We're saying, hey, pin nine, we're gonna PWM you. And now it says, hey, well, what is the amount you want to set the PWM to? Somewhere between zero to 255. If we set it to zero, this would have an average voltage of zero. If we set it to 255, the average voltage 
would be five volts and somewhere in between there, you know, like what, 127 or something like that, that would be two and a half volts. So you can use anywhere in that range. And again, it's adjusting the actual duty cycles to so the on and off cycles of the pin. All right, again, super important function, analog right, Arduino specific, you can use it to set PWM for a pin. Okay, so we've talked about pin mode and analog right so far. Now what's this next line of code here? Well, look at this. We're doing another assignment. So we're saying, hey, brightness, that was a variable we made, right? What was this? Brightness was equal to zero. So it says brightness is equal to brightness plus fade amount. That Doesn't that look like weird algebra? Well, remember, it's not algebra. The assignment operator is saying, take the stuff on the right side of the equal sign, evaluate it, and then store it in this variable. So here we have brightness. Well, what is brightness? Well, it was zero, right? So this is zero plus another variable, fade amount. What's this? Well, it was set at five. So what's zero plus five? That gives us five, right? So now brightness is now five. So brightness is five. Okay, that's interesting. So on line 13, we were PWMing pin nine and we're saying the brightness was zero. So that LED would be off. So now what we need to do is start talking about control structures. But I tell you what, this lesson is getting a bit long in the tooth. So let's pick up control structures next time and learn about how we can adjust logic to get our program to do some really interesting stuff. Before you'd go, I'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions about this lesson, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as best as I can. Also, if you really want to do a deep dive into this Arduino programming, check out programmingelectronics.com for our training program. Thanks a lot. See you here shortly.